All right, good morning, everyone. Good to have everybody out this morning. Could we all please stand and we'll go ahead and do our morning pledges, please. All right. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. To our Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again. To the American flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. I believe she said we're going to sing Acapulco. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll have the choir up, please. No Acapulco. <laughs> Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, 
Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Go to uh, 578. No, it's 579, sorry. I got to looking at it, I thought, we don't know that song. <laughs> Amen. As the choir comes down, let's all stand in fellowship.
Amen. Amen. It's a time for prayer. We've got a few people we need to pray for this morning. Uh, spoke with Brother Jeff Ford yesterday. Uh, he was telling me about an accident that happened somewhere. Uh, two families were traveling back from vacation, and apparently the students were uh, students from, I believe, Jacksboro Elementary that was uh, in one of the vehicles. And from what he told me, he believes one of them died in that accident. Uh, it was a real bad vehicle accident. Uh, the family, I don't know which family it was, but the two boys' names was Skylar Ward, and the other one was Skylar Moore. So let's remember those families. Uh, above all, we, we certainly want to remember our lost people, the homeless, our veterans, for all those who served to to try to help one another. Remember Hazel this morning. Uh, you know, she had a very, very close call this week, and uh, I'm very thankful for the prayers that of ever, each and every one here, uh, but she wasn't ready to go, so God wasn't ready for her yet, so, but she was very close. Melinda had some special prayer requests this morning, as well as Debbie, so do we have any others that we need to remember? Yes. All right. Anybody else, please? All right. Good to have each and every one of you here. So those who have an unspoken prayer request, please, all that will, let's come into the altar and let's pray, take it before the Lord. Amen. May I have the men up for the morning offering, please? Brother Brian, I'll ask you to say the blessing, please.
I'd like to say something before the, I ask anybody to come up and sing, but uh, as I was telling the class this morning, you know, when you, you have a near-death experience and you see somebody that's, that's struggling for their last breath, you know, it's the same message that the preachers preach that you're not promised tomorrow or you're not promised the next second of breath. But when you have that opportunity and you have loved ones around you, don't wait until tomorrow when they're gone to tell them that you love them. You know, um, I just realized how close, how close that, that could have been. So I know I've had those, that near-death experience myself. And for those of you that have experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. And you don't know for sure if you're promised tomorrow. So as I told the, the class this morning, don't wait until it's too late. You know, tell your family that you love them. All right, I've said that. So those who have a special song, Courtney, would you and Lisa have a song that you'd like to sing or Anthony? Okay, don't run. <laughs> there we go. been on the mountain with Jesus. I have been in the valley so low, but never one time has he failed me. When to him with my burdens I go, so let me with you, Jesus. Please don't ever leave me alone. For without you, Lord, I could never, no, never make heaven my home. He found me when I was in trouble. He found me when I was so blue. He found me when no one could help me. And I did not know just what to do. So let me walk with you, Jesus. Please don't ever leave me alone for without you lord i could never no never make heaven my home if i had all the wealth of this whole world if i had all that money could buy but I had not the love of my Savior, then I would not be ready to die. So let me walk with you, Jesus. Please don't ever leave me alone. For without you, Lord, I could never, no, never make heaven my home. <coughs> Thou 
There was a king who got a letter from a mighty army without number. He spread it out there for the Lord to get a view. God sent a prophet and just one angel. The devil's army met its doom. It's just amazing what a prayer can do. It's moved mountains, parted rivers, brought the dead to life again. I've called upon an old prayer warrior a time or two. If you're in trouble, I'll go down all my bended knees for you. It's just amazing what a prayer can do. I saw a mama and her baby fight for life the whole night through. It seemed all hope was gone, the tears fell, not just a few. But there's old grandpa in the corner, he knew the one who pulled him through. And that baby's still alive to show what prayer can do. It's moved mountains, parted rivers, brought the dead to life again. I've called upon an old prayer warrior a time or two. If you're in trouble, I'll go down all my bended knees for you. It's just amazing what a prayer can do. I want to say this morning, I'm thankful for the prayers this week. Like Dad said, you know, Mom was really bad off, and the nursing side of me, I had to try to put it aside, and I showed a side of myself. I guess I probably shouldn't have to some of the nurses, but that's okay. I was stepping forth for Mom. But this morning with my kids, we were talking, and we started doing what we called Bible drills growing up, and trying to teach them how to use their Bibles and how to find their verses, and... You know, they had a lot of questions about the verses that I just picked out. And I tried to tell them, I said, you know, we can't get better if we don't put God first. I said, I'm just as guilty. I said, put your phone away. Put your tablets away. Put your games away. I said, if you can't think about God for just one minute throughout your day, you're going wrong. I said, because if it wasn't for God sending his son for us, we wouldn't be here. So if you can't spend one minute thinking about Jesus and your whole 24 hours in a day, then we need to reassess what we're doing. And with mom this week, it's really placed that burden on me because if we didn't have prayer of our church and our own faith, where would we be today? And so I'm so thankful that I was raised in church, thankful for my salvation because if I didn't have that, I don't know where we'd be because we all had that faith that mom would be okay, or that even if she passed, we knew where she was going. We had that faith and that understanding. And it's so hard when you know that there's others that don't have it. So I'm so thankful for that this morning, and it's something I wanted to leave with everybody. If you can't take just a few minutes out of your day to pick up your Bible or to even think about Jesus, where do you stand with him? I had no one to blame. How I longed to hide my face. I was so ashamed for all the wrong I'd done. And I knew I had to pay. I was bound to face hell's flames. I'd be there today. My friend, but for the blood. But for the blood shed on Calvary's tree, but for the blood there be no hope for you and me. For all my righteousness was filthy rags and that's all I'd ever be, but for the blood that cleansed and set me free. Even now I get so low, 
You know the devil lets me know I'm so undeserving I'm unworthy of God's love And oh yes I know it's true But here I am with the chosen few I'd be lost today But I'm saved but for the blood But for the blood Shed on Calvary's tree but for the blood, there be no hope for you and me. For all my righteousness was filthy rags, and that's all I'd ever be. But for the blood that cleansed and set me free. But for the blood that cleansed and set me free.
Amen. Back there in the, in the sound booth, victory in Jesus. What? Well, we're in the gray book. Kathy's in the piano. It's going to be on the big screen. Chill. I got this. Not yet. I've got this. When I took this church, I had a head full of hair. It ain't there no more. I want to ask y'all a question this morning before we go any farther in this service. Has anybody in this church, has God give you a victory this week? It's about time we act like it. We're going to sing victory in Jesus. Then we're going to have some testimonies. If God has been good to you this week, whatever it is, the fact that you're in God's house and you're still breathing yes. and you're above ground Amen. and you drove here, yeah. that's something to thank God about. Amen. We're going to stand and sing. They've got it up, yonder and give it everything you've got because you're singing the glory to Almighty God. Amen. Yes. Go ahead and start us now, Kathy.
Good. Who's got a testimony this morning? You can sit down if you want to. Go ahead. Did God do anything this week in your life that changed your situation and you would be in here facing a whole different day had he not intervened in your life? Anyone else? Listen, we tend, we tend to take God for granted, don't we? Just because we're here and we got up and drove ourselves here and ate breakfast and all that, that God owes it to us or somehow or another it's just always going to be that way, you better be thankful for every breath you take. Be thankful for everybody God's got in your life this morning. We got a lot of empty seats, but it's because people are not here. One of these days, we're going to look to our left or to our right, we're going to have an empty seat that will never be filled again. So the message is, be thankful. Anybody else got a testimony? Because I'm about to preach a whole other message that I ain't intended on preaching this morning, but Philippians chapter number 4. Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse number 11. Amen. God bless you, Miss Betty. Amen. 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 All right. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to be abound and everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Father God, as we bow before you, Lord, ever so thankful for the gift of another day. Lord, for the opportunity to be in your house. 
Lord, to proclaim your word, to fellowship with our church family, God, to experience the testimonies, but the Lord, just to wake up our eyes and be thankful in your goodness. We ask that you search out the hearts here. God, that you would just pull the burdens, those who are burdened down, that you would just pull them closer to you. Those who are going through a time of sickness, God, that you'd strengthen them. Those who are weak, hungry, God, those who have a void in their life and they don't know how to fill it. God, we pray for every need that's before you this day. For the power of God upon the message, the words to say, and the message of the hour. We ask that anyone's lost, they'd be saved. Anyone that simply needs to draw close, they'll do it. And we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, the honor, the glory for it all. In Christ Jesus' precious holy name we do pray, and amen. Let me tell you what God's been dealing with me about since I came back out here after the Sunday school hour. There is a difference when you pray out of desperation than when you pray out of victory. And if things in your life has gotten to the place where you're now desperate, you'll view your relationship with Christ much different than you do when you're walking in victory with Him. Truth is, church, we're living in desperate times. Every minute that we live is a minute closer to death, to judgment, to another day if God chooses to give it to us. And we've gotten to the place where we know time is closer than it's ever been. And so what Paul is trying to let us know this morning is this. He said, I've learned a very valuable lesson in my life with God. He said, my life ain't, since I got saved, ain't, it ain't always been perfect. Let me tell you something, you're going to have valleys, you're going to have storms, you're going to have problems. But Paul said, I've learned not to ever be desperate. Desperate means that you are not thinking clearly. It means you're not depending upon God. It means you're desperate. Instead of having enough faith to rely that God's got you, God's got your circumstances, God already knows the end from the beginning before you ever offer the first word of prayer. God's already got the situation handled. And he's saying, don't be desperate. Don't do anything because you're doing it out of want. But live every day satisfied of your relationship with Christ. Now, this is one of these where I just kind of spitball it and just preach off the cuff, but here we go. What Paul is trying to say that I speak in respect of want. He's saying I ain't speaking out of desperation. Paul says I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to be full. I know what it's like to be accepted. I know what it's like to be loved. I know what it's like to be hated. Paul's saying everything that you and me go through on a daily, it's our daily life, Paul says it's happening to me. Don't think because he was an apostle and because he wrote 14 books of the Bible and he could raise the dead and heal the sick and do all these things that he didn't have a bad day. Paul says, I know exactly what it's like to go for days and not have a bite to eat. We live in a time, church, where you do not know that you can feed your family tomorrow. You have no guarantee there's food at the grocery store, money in your pocket, or anything available. But we've got a God that supplies every need. And He's saying, you just focus on God. Quit focusing on how what your bank account says, how much is in your bill, though, how you're trying to figure out your life and your next step and how to solve your problems and be satisfied in your relationship with Christ. We worry more about that stupid Facebook and how many friends we got and stuff, who likes us and who don't, and we're not focusing. Do we have a relationship with God? 
Paul said, I ain't worried about that. He said, I, if I've been shipwrecked, he said, listen, it ain't the worst thing that can happen. I know what it's like to be forsaken, but I also know what it's like to be loved unconditionally. They ain't nothing can happen to you, regardless of whether you've got a friend or not. You've got a friend in the Lord Jesus who said He'd never leave you nor forsake you. You'll never go through a valley. He ain't going through the valley with you. And God's saying, I look down out of heaven and I look specifically at my church and I see them worrying more about what they can't do, what they ain't got, what ain't working out for them, what, that, what it is. They got a whole list of this ain't how I want it, this ain't how I would like it to be instead of being thankful for what God is doing in your life. Because if God ever withdraws His hand from you, you're about to see what real trouble is. And we come into God's house and we're dragging our lip all the way from the front door all the way to here and we can't enjoy what God is doing. Paul said, it ain't out of want is not how I pray. I don't find my happiness based on what I do have or I don't have. I don't get my victory based on whether God answers this prayer according to the way I pray it or not. As long as I got Jesus in my life, as long as I know I'm heaven bound, as long as I know my name's in the Lamb's book of life, as long as I know God holds every breath right in His hand, as long as I know God's put a hedge around me, if you think your life is bad today, let God pull that protective hedge away from you and let the enemy have at you and you're about to find out what a bad day really is. Paul said, I don't pray out of want. Because I've had it both ways. I've been in abundance. I've been without. Let me tell you something, church. Our grandparents and great-grandparents, now they can give you a testimony on what it's like to be without. We got way too much stuff available to us in the day that we live in to say, I ain't got nothing. We need to be thankful. And the Apostle Paul says it ain't out of desperation. Yeah, is that not a lot of times when we find ourselves it ain't happening as quick as we want it to? We start praying desperately. We start living desperately. Isn't it when the closer we get to where it ain't happening as quick as we thought it ought to, then we, now all of a sudden we want to really draw close to Him, but it's out of desperation and not out of love. It's like this. People that don't have nothing much to do with you till they find out you got money, and all of a sudden now you're their best friend. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, God's got something you ain't getting nowhere else, and God's got something that you want that you need, and all of a sudden I love God now until He meets that need. Am I preaching? All right then. You might get to shout here in a few minutes, but right now we're just covering some territory. Not out of want, not out of desperation. Because we, Paul says before you can ever get to verse number 13, he said you've got to realize there's going to be days it goes your way, there's going to be days it don't. But he said if you'll just remember that no matter what you're going through, you still got the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're having a bad day, that don't mean He loves you less than anybody else or He loves you less today than He did. He paid the price that you could go to heaven one day. He loves you the same each and every day. He's no respecter of persons. And God's saying, what I want from you is just love me for me. Not for my prayer answering. Not for my abundance. Not so you can be easier on you today. God's saying just love me because you love me. The Apostle Paul said, I've got to stop everything that I'm doing just so I can write and give you hope. Because there's no such thing as a child of God being completely without. You've got salvation. You've got God. You've got hope. 
Paul said, what are you going to do about them people that ain't saved? They have no hope. Has God ever brought you through a storm in your life? He'll bring you through the next one. When, no, when you had no other way to get your needs met, has He ever met a need for you? He'll meet the next one. God said, if nothing else, what Paul is writing, every time you seem to be without, God says He's got something on the way. God's trying to say, I want you to just put your mind back on me. Get it off, you problems. God's going to fix them. God's saying, I've got you. Has God ever forsaken anybody? No, He has not. He lets us go through the hurtful times just to let us know what it's like to be hurt so that He can drag us up and love us again. God's good to us, church. Verse number 13, what does He say? I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Does that sound like somebody that's desperate? Doesn't that sound like somebody says that says, let me tell you something, devil, but the devil ain't the biggest problem you got. The biggest problem you and me got is our flesh. Our biggest problem we got is our mind. The biggest problem we got, it ain't, going, it ain't going the way I want it to go, so therefore God must have forsaken me. I must be doing something wrong. I'm watching everybody else and different people get blessed, but look how I'm struggling today. What God is saying, if you would just get this in your heart and in your mind, and every time you hit a valley or a storm in your life, just saying, I can. He said that applies to everybody that's saved, bless God. And say, I can still do all things. Thy enemy's not God got the best of me. I've still got a victory. It's just on its way. God, to get me through this storm I'm going through. I'm not going to get let it get the best of me. I'll get up every day, bless God of my life, and I'm going to tell God how much I love Him, how good He's been to me, how much He has blessed me. It ain't going to say, oh, woe is me. I'm going to say, bless God, I have been blessed. Amen. That's what God wants you to say. I, whoo, glory, I've been blessed. Every word that comes out of our mouth, no matter what's going on, should be a victory speech. Because I can do all things through Christ. I don't get my strength from Biden. I don't, Biden economics ain't, making, ain't meeting my needs. But I've got one that sits on the right hand of the Father. He knows how to, He knows what I'm going to eat that day before I ever get hungry. He knows how to soothe every hurt I'm going to have. He knows how to take care of me. You think your plans is what gets you through life, you better think again. It's God has got every day of your life mapped out before you ever live it. Before the sun ever came up in your life this morning, God has your day already laid out. Let me tell you something, just being right here in this house of God this morning, despite of what your week has been, God said you're walking in victory. Start acting like it, amen. God's been too good to you and me to go around mealy mouth worrying and fussing about what you ain't got. Whew. Hang on, I'm about to preach to you here in a minute. Number three, you know what Paul's saying? God of supply. Do you realize back in the old days before we all got jobs in grocery stores, you didn't grow it, you didn't eat it. God would give you a seed and a piece of ground. You had to go out there and work. You had to labor because you knew hunger was coming. And the mommies and the daddies would say, I've got little ones that depend upon me. I brought them into this world. They're my responsibility. If I don't get out there and work, if I don't depend upon God, if I don't plant that seed and work it and cut the weeds out and pray for good growing season and pray for rain and pray for harvest and get that harvest and can that harvest, we don't eat. You want to know what the problem with the New Testament church is? 
I'm going to tell you. We've gotten so lazy by thinking because we got a pocket with money in it that all we have to do is buy our way through life. And sometimes, church, things come to our life that money can't fix. And God will say, I'm going to let you go through a dry spell. You're going through a place where there's not plenty. I'm going to let you do without. I'm going to let you suffer a little bit because you've done forgot where your supply and your harvest comes from. It comes from the hand of God Almighty. We've got to thinking as long as there's a bank I can borrow from, as long as there's a government program that's going to meet my needs, I ain't got to live for God. I can just go off of my paycheck. Well, sometimes, dear friend, your paycheck ain't going to to cover the problems you're going through we have gotten lazy and quit giving God the praise the honor the glory for every good thing he does for us because God will supply it ain't the paycheck your abundance doesn't come from the job that we work it comes from the hand of almighty God How come I feel like your daddy giving you a talking to this morning? <laughs> but I'm just telling you, this is not the message I woke up with this morning. Go ahead. It ain't going to be long, but I got to say this because I think it's funny. Y'all are easing around this morning like you're sunburnt. Yeah, I've been where you're at. That's why I don't get back out in the sun. All right. See, I wanted to make you laugh because I felt you just couldn't take too much more. So now you settle down. Now I'm going to start ripping you up again. That's, that's, how, that's my approach. Uh, all right. Get ready because now I'm about to apply the ointment again. Notice this. You know what Paul said, and we've read his life, this Paul been in prison. But you know how Paul got glory from it? He said, I'm in it. God let me in it. God sustained me while I was in it. But thank God I didn't stay. I'm out again. What I'm telling you is this, is that we imprison our own self in our mind because we get to thinking about what we don't have, what we can't do, what ain't working out for us, and we surround ourselves with bars that we put on and limiting God because I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't God. And all the time God said, it's just for a little while while but bless God Paul said I didn't stay in prison he blessed me while I was in it but thank God he opened the doors that I put myself in I ain't in there no more amen what God is saying yes sometimes life feels like prison but it don't last forever Paul not only said this y'all remember I'll get to it in a minute Paul's been shipwrecked has he not We've all read it. He said, I've been in the deep. I was in a perfectly good boat, but the thing run aground and it sank. The storm came along for 14 days and 14 nights and we couldn't take it anymore. And the next thing I know, we're floating around with nothing but just a little bit of something to hang on to. But he said, I want you to understand, I know what it's like to be shipwrecked. I know what it's like to float around with no foundation to stand on. I know what it's like not knowing anything, not seeing a rescue. There's no coast guard in my life. But I want you to understand, as long as I knew I was floating around, there was rescue on its way because Paul said it's always happened. God's never left me in the deep. He's never left me shipwrecked. He's always came to where I was at. And if nobody else knew where he was floating and where, that's where he was at, thank God God looked down out of heaven. And that's my apostle right there. And those are his shipmates right there. And those are my apostles and my disciples. You know what God's saying every time you feel like you're just floating around and nobody's there and nobody's on the way God's looking down out of heaven he sees exactly where you are and he's on his way and if anybody rescues you it's going to be God himself because there ain't nothing you can find yourself in that God can't come to where you are and get you out of it and when there was no coast guard for the apostle Paul there was Jesus 
But don't you feel lonely sometimes? Don't you feel like you're just out of reach of everything and everybody? But may I tell you that those nail-scarred hands will reach down from the throne of grace and come right to where you are and pick you right up and take you back to safety. Let me just preach this just a little bit more. You know what the Apostle Paul says? I know what it's like to be beaten. You see, he's been striped five times with 39 stripes. He's been stoned twice and left for dead. He's been beaten with rods. He's been whipped without any kind of mercy. They did everything but take his life. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever been beaten by life to the point you just wanted to die? You would hope you would die. You would hope that God would just come in and just take the hurt away from you because you didn't think you could take any more of what you were going through. That life had just gotten so bad, you didn't even want to endure it anymore. But somehow or another, God heals the hurts. He might leave the scars. That's a remembrance of what you did, where God got you out of, and where He took you back to. What Paul is saying, yeah, I've had some hurts. I've I've been hurt. But he said, bless God, I know what it's like when the hurts stops. Amen. You see, God... Let's us go through the hurtful times. Because it's through the hurtful times. And every child in this church, and if you can remember back to when you was a child, there was something about the touch of a loving mother, of a loving father, of a loving grandparent. That when you in the worst time of your hurts could just put their arms and just hold you close. And they'd take the hurt away from you. And I know that can be true. You ever seen a kid, their heart's broken and their life was over as far as they could tell? And they just, that mama would pick them up or daddy and grandpa and grandma would pick them up and they'd snub for just a little while, but you could see the hurt leave their body and you could see just the peace that comes over them. That's what God does. Paul said, I know life hurts you. I know you're going through some things that you wished you hadn't of. But what Paul is trying to say is this, dear friend. There's coming a day where God says you've hurt just enough. And a God that has all the love and the touch that that nobody else has, He'll just scoop you up in those nail-scarred hands and He'll just hold you and He'll just love you and He'll just make everything better. Paul says, I know what it's like to be beaten without mercy, but I know what it's like to have the love of God come in and take that hurt away from me. Notice what else. He said, I know what it's like to be hungry. Can I just tell you something? Right here in this county, this one we live in, there are grown-ups and little kids that go to bed hungry. Mom and daddy can't afford it. Mom and daddy spend it on drugs. Mom and daddy are partying it up. And thank God for special, those, those free lunches and breakfasts that they have. And thankful to the breakfast that this church serves. But you understand there's people that know for real what it's like to go to bed hungry. And to get up and know there's nothing in that refrigerator and there's nothing in their cabinets and there's nothing that their providers can do to change it. We've all been hungry a time or two, but there ain't hardly anybody in this church for very long at all has just done without. But there's some that have. But you understand we've got a God that's let us get hungry, but he's not let us starve. And can I say this just because I think it's part of the message. Just because you ain't got what you're looking for in the cabinet, the refrigerator don't give you the right to slam the doors and throw a cuss fit because you ain't got what you want, be thankful you've got anything in there to eat. Because God ain't about giving you your special whatever. God's about giving you food. We've gotten way too picky in our prayer time on how we want God to fill it. Let me just go ahead on. Paul said, I know what it's like to be sick. 
But he says, I also know what it's like to be healed. Can anybody shout about that this morning? I go back to y'all's testimony. I got a good idea how sick Hazel was. I've got an idea because I talked to her oldest son right here. And y'all don't know that what that's about, but I do. I know, I hope she ain't watching. Oh, gosh. Can you erase that part? <laughs> Sorry, Hazel. Not really, because it was funny. <laughs> anyway, let's move on, church. Y'all, get your mind back on the message. And she really was that sick to where he thought he would lose his wife and her mother and their grandmother. But God looked down and saw something you couldn't. God said, I just want you to know who holds her last breath in their hand, and that's God. It ain't the doctor, it ain't the medicine, it ain't their experience, it ain't the machines. And what God says, if you know that you're this close to breathing your last breath and your life is about to end and I save your life, I want you to know how much you're going to appreciate the next breath you take. Do you understand? And they ain't the only ones. We've all been there. We've all had someone the doctor says there's no hope. But God says, let me show you about hope. Let me show you who holds the last breath. It ain't the doctor. It's God Himself that gave the first breath man ever breathed. He'll keep giving breaths until the last breath when He calls us home and we breathe our last breath on earth and our next breath is up in heaven. God said, remember, who is it that gives you the breath you breathe? And be thankful. Are you getting the message this morning? Be thankful. Wonder if you're thinking, I wish he'd have preached that other one. <laughs> I'm going with God. <clears throat> Notice this. Paul knows what it's like to be afflicted. That's where we're at this morning. And I don't want you to think that I'm just being mean-spirited. I'm not. But being the pastor here, I just pay attention. I pay attention to your countenance, your words, your tone. And I can see what kind of spirit that you come in here with. with and I just do. That's my job to pay attention. And God's saying, look out here. And then he says, preach on being thankful. Does that mean it don't hurt to go through a rough patch in your life? No, God says, I know it hurts you. But God's saying, you're getting, you're getting your mind off of being thankful for everything that I have done for you. Amen. It's like this. Have you ever known anybody that had a child that was so spoiled that they just throw a little hissy fit because they didn't get exactly what they wanted. Am I, am I preaching to anybody? No, I'm not saying it's y'all's kids or your grandkids. I'm not silly. But what I'm saying, if you've ever been to Walmart, you've seen it. It happens in the five toy aisles that they have. And I want that one. And just throw that little fit and stomp that little foot. You know what they're saying? I ain't thankful for anything you've ever done to me or for me. I just know you ain't giving me that right there right now what I really want. And so therefore, I'm not going to thank you or be thankful for everything that you've done for me. I'm just going to throw a fit on you and make you feel bad about not doing what I want you to do. That's what we do with God. I ask you for that. I prayed for that. I've even been doing more and living closer and you still didn't give me that. God said, I know your intent, I know your heart, I know your motive, and no, I ain't going to give you that. 
And the one thing they should get during that process that they don't get is the whipping for acting like that instead of giving them the toy to shut them up. How many knows I can say this with all truthfulness? God don't play. God will let you throw you a little hissy fit. Now let me just preach on. Because this might be my last message here. I don't know. <clears throat> if there's a pastor vote after church, he could be a little iffy. Notice this. We've all read the 23rd Psalm, have we not? I know there is a valley of the shadow of death. But have you ever thought about what God put in that valley? Still waters, green pastures, a rod and a staff, the presence of God, goodness and mercy. Can I just say this, get us back on track because I'm about done. God has put more good in my life and your life than He's ever allowed bad to happen. Because you want to know if life is sort of like this Facebook business, we don't care about the thousand likes we got. We just worried about them five dislikes where somebody just don't like me. Am I right? Nod your head. We focus on hurt more than we focus on what God has done. And God said, y'all need to take a break. I'm good to you. God has blessed us beyond belief. Because if you think the Republicans or the Democrats are going to fix your problem, give you happiness in this United States, you're going to be disappointed next election. And if you live long enough and God stays His rapture in the church out, the next one after that is going to be disappointing too. Finally, Kathy, get ready. I am, well, just come on and make your way up. He says this right here. The only contentment we are ever going to find in this life is to be content with Jesus. And God had me preach that this right here was for this reason. Myself, you, we've all been guilty about saying, God, why? Why you let it like this? You remember the disciples, what they said was the most hurtful thing they could ever say to Jesus in the, in the boat? Don't you care that we perish? Do you ever feel like your life and your prayer life is like Jesus? Why are you letting this happen? Why did you let this go so long? Why did you let my kids do what they did? Why did you let my spouse do this? Lord, why did you let this hurt? Why did you let somebody hurt my feelings? Lord, why did you let me do without? Why did you let that thing tear up? Why did you not answer my prayer, Lord? You know I need this. Do we ever get like that? So can I compel you to do something? Take a break from your life. Take a moment. Devote this next few minutes strictly with the Lord Jesus Christ. And ask Him to forgive you for ever, ever having those feelings and thoughts. And say, God, I just want to ask your forgiveness. But Lord, I want to take a minute to just thank you. Because I have sat back and watched prayers being answered the last four years in this church. You got people sitting in this church this morning that the devil said never would be here. You've got people that should have been buried because of something in their life, but yet they're not. You've got joy and happiness that you didn't think you'd ever be happy again. God has sustained us. God has blessed us. And all He wants out of us is just to appreciate 
what he has done. You remember how in the second time them boys was in a pickle in the middle of the night and that floating around in the boat, Jesus walking on the water? You know what the Bible says? He would have passed them by. Do you want to know why? In case you forgot, they considered not the miracle of the loaves. You know what that's saying? They didn't even thank him for what he has done for them. We need to stop. And we just need to come to the altar and just thank God for everything that He's done while we stand to our feet. We are so blessed by the gifts from Your hand. I just can't understand why you loved us so much we are so blessed we just can't find a way or the words that can say thank you lord for your touch when we're empty cause us to know we are so blessed that what we have to bring take it all everything Lord we love you so Amen. Thank you. Anybody got anything on their mind or their heart before we dismiss? I had a thought in my head, but it ain't there now. I must start writing stuff down. Anybody got anything? Anybody else? God's good to us, church. Way good to us. Uh, tonight, I reckon, 6 o'clock, come on back. 5 o'clock, we might have some coffee or some snacks or something. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure we will. Y'all ain't got nothing? We can go then. All right. Danny, I'll get you to dismiss us, and y'all wake the kids up. They got a job to do here in a minute. Amen. Come on, youngins. All right, we're ready. And they lifted holy hands towards heaven and they shouted. Praise.
Amen. 